grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, welcome to St Peter's Church here in West Blatchington in Hove on this Mothering Sunday. And it's great that you've decided to join us, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're listening on the telephone, uh, whether you've been joining us uh, for a long time or whether you're fairly new to the life of St Peter's. It's great that you've decided to join us today. Do hope that this service is really helpful for you, whether you're a mother or whether you're not. And I also just want to say uh, an extra big welcome as well to anyone at the Tweed Care Home in Eastbourne who might be joining us for this service today. Uh, it's great that you can join us on this Mothering Sunday. Well, it's a, it's a special service today. We're going to be looking at a great story from the Bible. We're going to be singing some great songs and hymns. And we've also got some really special, lovely video messages from some of our brownies going out to the mum. So a big hello to the brownies and the brownies families as well if you're watching our service today. We're going to watch those videos in just a moment. But the first thing that we're going to do is what we, we often do here in our services at St Peter's is we're going to say this opening prayer together. So the words will appear on the screen. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to the red, violets are blue. You're my mum and I love you. To all mothers everywhere, we thank you for being homework helpers, picker uppers, fun makers, peace bringers, love givers, memory makers, tummy fillers, and hug givers. God made a wonderful mother, a mother who never grows old. He made her smile of the sunshine and he moulded her heart of pure gold. In her eyes he placed bright shining stars, in her cheeks fair roses you see. God made a wonderful mother, and he gave that dear mother to me. My mummy is glorious, joyful, happy, loving, cuddly, kind and fun. She is good at tickling and the best cuddler. I love my mummy so, 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 so much. I hope you do as well. I love you, Mummy. A Mother's Day poem. Here's a petal just for me when I want to scrape my knee. Here's a petal just for me when you rock so gently. Here's a petal just for me when you sang endlessly. Here's a petal just for me when all odds were against me. Here's a petal just for me when I rebelled against you. Here's a petal just for me when you sat waiting expertly. Here's a petal just for me when you prayed forgivingly. Here's a petal just for me because you gave unselfishly. Here's a petal just for me to weave in the untold parts. Mum, here's a petal just for me sewn by the thread of your heart. God, God guides each petal as he creates the masterpiece. Now, children, did you know there's a really good verse in the Bible that would be great for us to learn on this Mothering Sunday? It says this, children, obey your parents the way the Lord wants. This is the right thing to do. The command says, honour your father and mother. And that's from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. So how can you honour your mother today? Well, here's a few ideas, and I'll give you an idea of what you could do. And if you think that it honours your mother, shout out true. But if you think it doesn't honour your mother, shout out false. OK, right. Here's the first one. Doing what your mum says right away. Does that honour her or not? Shout it out. True, false. OK, OK. What about having a tantrum if you don't get what you want? Does that honour her or not? True or false? Okay, how about eating your dinner with thankfulness? Does that honour her, true or false? 
okay? What about complaining about what mum cooked for dinner? Does that honour her or not? Hmm. What about telling your mum that you love her? Does that honour her or not? How about praying for your mother? Does that honour her or not? The last one, what about telling that your mum isn't very nice to your friends? Does that honour her or not? Hmm. Well, maybe you've got your own ideas about what it means to honour your mum. Um, but now for this bit, I need the mums in the room, right, to cover your ears, okay? And children, make sure their ears are covered, okay? Okay, ready? Do you know, one of the ways we can honour our mothers is by telling them how much we like about certain things about them. So I wonder today, perhaps, if you haven't already, you could make a card or write a letter or a drawing, and on it could be all the things that you like about your mum. It could be the way that she reads you stories or the way she helps you when you're hurt or how she gives you hugs and prays for you. And when you go and give it to her, why don't you ask to say a thank you prayer for her right there and then? Okay, something like, dear God, thank you so much for my mum. That would be such a wonderful, special thing to do. What a wonderful gift. And if your mum is a bit older, well, maybe you can give her a phone call or get her on Zoom or, or Skype or something like that. And if your mum's not around anymore, well, that's okay. Why don't you think about the things that were special to you about your mum? And you can say thank you to God yourself for mothers everywhere. Press on mums in all the chaos Look to Jesus through the tears Press on mums, God will guide you Through those precious tender years And in all you do, do it for Jesus Who won you life and free forgiveness Yesterday, today he is the same All you do, do it in Jesus' name Press on dads, love your wife, serve your children, set the pace. Press on dads, seize a moment, show them Jesus, run the race. And in all you do, do it for Jesus, who won you life and free forgiveness. Yesterday, today, he is the same. All you do. in our service where we can say sorry to God and as Christians we believe it's a right and good thing to say sorry to God because sometimes we do or think things that are wrong and they don't please God and because we love God we want to say sorry but we say sorry knowing that because of Jesus 
because of everything that Jesus has done for us, most especially by dying on the cross for us, we know that when we say sorry to God, God will definitely forgive us. So that's what we're going to do now in the words on the screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, now, Elliot, who's a member of St. Peter's Church, is going to bring us our Bible reading, which comes from the Old Testament. It comes from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. A man was shopping in a supermarket when he noticed a little old lady following him around. If he stopped, she stopped. Furthermore, she kept staring at him. She finally overtook him at the checkout and she turned to him and said, I hope I haven't made you feel uneasy. It's just that you look so much like my late son. That's okay, he answered. I know it's silly, but if you'd call out goodbye, mum, as I leave the store, it would make me feel so happy, the lady said. She then went through the checkout, and as she was on her way out of the store, the man called out, goodbye, mum. The little old lady waved and, and smiled a big smile back at him. Well, pleased that he had brought a little sunshine into someone's day, he went to go and pay for his groceries. That comes to £189.23, said the checkout operator. How come it's so much? I've only bought five items, the man said. The checkout operator replied, yes, but your mother said you pay for her things too. Jokes aside, Mothering Sunday is a great day. It's an opportunity for us to spoil our mums, uh, to thank them for their love and to actually to praise God for the gift of mothers. But on the flip side, for many people it can be quite a hard day as well. We may not be able to see our mothers because of the pandemic, or maybe our mothers have died, or perhaps we didn't have a good relationship with them. For some of you today it will be hard because you always wanted children and weren't able to. Or perhaps you're not in contact with your children, or perhaps they are no longer with us. But whatever our feelings are about Mothering Sunday, I think we can all agree that being a mum is hard. Which is why today we're thinking about what the Bible has to say about 
God's grace for mothers. Now, if you're not a mother, please don't switch off, because while it's right to think today about paternal motherhood, the Bible actually has a lot to say about all Christian women having a distinct motherly role in the church. And for us men, we also need to hear this. So I believe that whoever we are and however we're feeling today, God wants to teach us from his word on this Mothering Sunday. And today's true story from the Bible, it's a great one. Now, many of you will know the background to this story that we've just heard, but just in case you don't, let me fill in some of the details. For several hundred years, God's chosen people, the Israelites, had been living in Egypt. Now, they first came there as a small family to escape starvation and ended up staying. As time went by, they grew and grew until they were so numerous that the leaders of the country started to get nervous. In fact, they made them slaves. But that wasn't enough. You see, the Egyptian king Pharaoh became so paranoid that he hatched a a really evil plan to have all of the Israelite baby boys killed by being thrown into the River Nile. I think we'd all agree it must have been a terrible time to be a mother. The fear that your newborn baby would be snatched from you and taken away. But then at that point, the story zooms in to one mother in particular, a mother whose name we learn in chapter six is called Jochebed. And as we consider what she must have been going through, the first thing that we learn from this is that God sees what mothers go through. God sees what mothers go through. It says this. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. What we've just had described for us here is a mother at the end of her limit. Now, um, Claire and I, our son James, he turned three months this Thursday, and I honestly can't imagine what it must have been like to try and hide a baby away for three months. They make a lot of noise. And it must have been terrible because every cry and splutter could have given this baby away to the enemy. But the mother reaches a stage where she feels that she can hide him no more. She can no longer fulfill her deep motherly desire to keep her baby safe. So she decides to make a a simple basket as waterproof as she can so that she can put her baby inside it and go down to the river's edge and, and let it float out onto the river Nile. If her son is going to go into the water one way or another, she would rather give him the best chance of survival. Now, the word for basket here in the original Hebrew is actually a clue. It's actually an ark, an ark. You know, that thing that Noah and the animals were saved through. And it will turn out that this far smaller ark will also be the method of God's deliverance as well but we're not there yet in the story. Jochebed, the mother, doesn't know what fate awaits her baby. She had no idea quite how amazing the outcome would be. But what this mother is doing here is perhaps not so unusual. We may think it's completely mad to do this for your baby, but actually historians think it wasn't so uncommon. What Jochebed is doing here is handing her child over to providence. There is nothing left for him. There's nothing else I can do. Perhaps he will stand a chance of life somewhere else, somehow, some way. In fact, what she's doing is not so different to the practice of leaving a baby on the doorstep of an orphanage. It's the last resort of a desperate mother who feels there is nowhere else to turn. But God is not blind to her pain. Mothers, Whatever you are facing now, or have faced, or will face in the future, God sees what you're going through. You may feel like you're on the water's edge at this moment because of tiredness, anxiety, worry, depression, or illness, but remember this, God sees you. And as Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Don't forget that. 
But this is not the only time in the Bible when someone hands over their precious child to a grim future. During this time of Lent, we prepare ourselves once again to stand again at the foot of the cross and stare in awe and wonder that God would love me and you so much that he would let his son die on a cross for you and for me. You see, the God who sees what pain mothers go through has also gone through unbearable pain in seeing his own son die. But just like this story, that one, as we'll uncover in the coming weeks, doesn't end ultimately in pain and misery, but in redemption. But as we read on, not only do we see that God sees what mothers are going through, but God also provides for mothers. Our story continues. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. What a transformation. From almost certain death on the Nile to safety in the royal household. Do you know what? All of these verses are dripping with God's providence, his care, his providing care. The fact that at that very time, the daughter of the Pharaoh, no less, the Pharaoh who was trying to have these babies killed, his daughter happened to be bathing in that part of the river. The fact that she saw a basket made of reeds in and amongst the reeds, which would have camouflaged them very well. The fact that instead of doing what her father would expect and hand him over, she took pity on this infant, knowing that it was an Israelite, probably because he would have been circumcised. Then the courage of Moses' sister Miriam to speak to the royal princess and to offer someone to look after the baby. You see, God was at work in the baby's basket and in all the other situations surrounding it. At one moment in history, God's entire plan for triumphing over evil was riding down the Nile River in a little papyrus basket, so vulnerable. One person put it like this, God was at work in every detail surrounding the birth of this rescuer. Consider the facts. Moses is spared by being cast onto the very Nile that was to drown him. He's treated with maternal kindness by the daughter of the very king who had condemned him and to whose descendants he would become a nemesis, and is assigned as a responsibility with pay to the one woman in all the world who most wanted the best for him, his own mother. Who else but God could accomplish such a great salvation? The point of Exodus 2, and this baby in the basket, is that God is able to provide, and especially that God provides for mothers. That means if you are a mother, you have a choice of who and what you turn to to sustain you as a mother. Is it how well you think you're raising your children that sustains you? Is it how your grown-up children have turned out that sustains you? Is it how other people think about you as a mother at the school gates or on social media and constantly trying to live up? Our passage says the one thing that you should turn to to provide you with the inner strength and resilience to face all the challenges of motherhood is not your own strength, but the almighty God who provides for mothers. So whatever you face this year as a mother to your own children or in a motherly role within the church, ask God to support you through it and he will provide you with what you need. And lastly, we need to get a sense of the bigger picture. And that is that God's plan includes mothers. God's plan includes mothers. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Imagine 
going from saying goodbye to your son forever to getting paid to raise him and all at Pharaoh's expense. And as she does raise him in those brief years before Moses will then enter into Pharaoh's household as an older child, his mother has a limited time to bring her son up to know and love the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Just like Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Those early formative years with his mother under the protection of Pharaoh's daughter will ground him in knowledge of who God is and who Moses is as one of God's people. So that when he hears, when he grows up and hears what the rest of culture is saying about all these different Egyptian gods and who he is, he will remember who God actually is and who he is as well. Mothers then have a hugely important role in raising their children to know and love God. It's the best gift that you can give. Now, homeschooling may have finished. There may be no more maths, English and science at home. But bringing up your children to know and love Jesus, well, there's no end to that. And that means that both mothers and fathers need support. Well, the great news, that's in part what the church exists for. There's that famous phrase, isn't it? I'm sure you've heard it, that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the same is true for raising a child to know and love Jesus. You don't need to, nor should you try and be the only one helping your child to grow in their faith. They need other spiritual mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandparents and siblings as well. And that's where we all come into play. Yes, God has given a special role to mothers, but each one of us also plays a part in passing on the good news of who Jesus is and what he's done to this generation and to the next one. But we do that together. So whether you're a mother or you have a role as a mother within the church or whether you relate to your own mother or to other mothers, And let us remember this this Mothering Sunday, God's care by seeing what mothers go through, how God provides for mothers in challenging times and at all times, and how mothers are part of God's plan. Amen.
Lord of life, today we pray for mothers, grandmothers, giving thanks for our own childhood under their care. For mothers in different circumstances, remembering especially those experiencing the single care of their children. For foster mothers, adoptive mothers, and those engaged in comforting and mothering in any way. For charities too who listen and take action. May they find the gifts of love, patience and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have today the endearing message of resourceful love of the mother of Moses for her child. The child who grew to inspire his people and lead them through many difficulties. We pray, Heavenly Father, for leaders worldwide, that they will also lead their people with patience and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican Communion, we remember the Iglesia Anglicana of Chile. In our Diocese for the Chichester Academies Trust, for Reverend Tim, Claire and their boys. And we pray for faithful friends who live outside the parish and for our dedicated gardening team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Queen and her family, that relationships between them can be resolved for the Duke of Edinburgh that he can return home to celebrate his 100th birthday with his family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all the marginalised in any way, for the unloved, the deprived and the insecure for those persecuted for their faith, thinking especially of the people of Miramar. For the sick, many still affected by the pandemic and all who care for them. For those we love who need our prayers, Daniel, Zoe and their family, Doreen Elliott, Margaret Shepherd. David Evans, Michael, Elizabeth Watkins, Leslie Jones, Simon Hill, Elaine Tugwell, Daphne White, Ray Batchelor, Bev Jeffrey, Anne O'Neill, Linda Wallace, Margaret Dolle, Jan and Roger, Alex, Chris, Marion Langton, L.C., Jackie Wood, Will Newman, Walter Beck, David Peters, Shirley Peters, Robert Delacour and Arthur Green. Lord, may they feel the touch of your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be with all who mourn the loss of loved ones. And on the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember Brenda Bruin, Roy Light, Anne Harrington, Caroline Garbett, Elizabeth Cook, John Simmons, Douglas Reed, Father Will Pratt, and Eric Cook. We leave them in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Thank you, Janet, for leading us in our prayers. We're going to continue in prayers now, and firstly with our collect, which is the church's special prayer, and this is the prayer for today on this Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself, strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us now pray the prayer that our Saviour taught us, often called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on this Mothering Sunday service. Just a few items of church family news to let you know about before we finish our service. The first to say is that if you're watching this as this video premieres or as the recording is available on the telephone, then we are having a Zoom church coffee um, in just a little while. At 11 a.m. there is a Zoom church coffee coffee and if you haven't been to one of those before basically make yourself a cup of tea and a coffee sit down in front of your computer or your smartphone and um, follow the link in the more info description if you're watching this on youtube and you can follow the link through to our zoom coffee and it basically it's an opportunity just for 20 or 25 minutes or so just to catch up and have a chat maybe to uh, see some familiar faces or maybe see some new ones and you're really warmly invited to that and that would be lovely to see you and catch up over a cup of coffee maybe you might want to say things about that happened on or um, on this day on this mothering sunday um, things that are going well maybe things that aren't going so well um, but it would just be lovely just to, to see you and to join you for a cup of coffee virtually and hopefully um, virtual things um, are going to be replaced more and more in the coming weeks and months by um, in-person things. And one of the ways we're seeing that is by going back to having services in the church building again. And in just a fortnight on Palm Sunday, we are going to be having our first service back here in the church which is very exciting. Now, for those of you who decided not to come back to church at this point, that's absolutely fine. Can't stress that hard enough. If you don't feel it's safe to come back at the moment, please don't feel the pressure to. But if you would like to come back to church and you feel it is safe, then it would be wonderful to be worshipping with you again. Now, we are still going to be doing services online and on the telephone. And at some point, we're going to be seeing how we can be moving from pre-recorded services like this to be live streaming our videos. We believe here at St. Peter's that everything that's happened throughout lockdown and the way we've been able to support both the parish and um, much further afield through our online and telephone services, we want to continue. This has become a new part of our mission here at St. Peter's West Blatchington, and we're going to continue that. And we'd love to be able to move to be live streaming our services on a Sunday morning and at other times as well. But we're not quite there yet. We need to invest in some tech to make all that possible. But we are looking at ways of being able to do that in the future. So we'll let you know more about that. We'll also let you know more about when we're going to be reintroducing Bible study groups in person and also um, uh, coffee mornings and music events, all that kind of stuff that we do here at St Peter's. That will happen, but we're just going to have to be patient when we can reintroduce that when it's safe and wise to do so. We're going to now finish our time with a final prayer of blessings. So let's just be still for a moment and let's pray for God's blessing on us, whether we're mothers or not. As we've seen in our Bible reading, we've all got this role of 
motherhood, of a parenting, of care within God's church. And we need God's help to do that. So let's bow our heads now as we pray for God's blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this Mothering Sunday and forever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.